the never keyword. It's one of those features in TypeScript that makes you wonder why, why does it even exist in the programming language? When you try to look up information about the never keyword, you see a whole bunch of articles explaining how it can be used, but very few talk about the intuition behind the keyword. Why does it even exist and why does it work the way it does? Well, in this video, I want to discuss why the never keyword works and what it truly means and why the use cases are the way they are. So we know that we can use the type keyword to create a new type alias in TypeScript. For example, we can create a type called color that is equal to a string. And then we can use this with a variable by saying const green type color equals green, like this. But in addition, we can also use type unions, where a type could be one or more different types. So for example, with this color, we can say that this is going to be a string or it could be a number. And what this allows us to do is we can assign green either string value like green or we can assign it a number like five. In order to understand the never keyword in TypeScript, we first have to understand how TypeScript deals with type unions. And to do that, we need to understand something called set theory. This is a branch in mathematics that has to deal with sets or collections of numbers. Notably, the two functions in set theory pertaining to TypeScript is the union and intersection. The union allows us to combine two or more sets together. For example, if we had a set A of type 1, 2, 3 and const B of type 4, 5, 6, if we were to perform the union, let's say C of A union B, then we would get a new set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, i.e. the combined sets of these two. Likewise with intersection, we can take two or more sets and essentially filter out the common values between those sets. So if we reused set A and actually, instead of reusing, let's assign set A to new value of 1, 2, 3, and set B of 1, 3. By performing the intersection of A intersection B, we would get a new set with only the values that are shared between those sets, which would be 1 and 3. Now, a notable characteristics of unions has to deal with what's known as the empty set. And the empty set is basically a set, set empty that has no values in them. If we were to take the union of an empty set with another set, you will notice a very peculiar behavior is observed. So for example, if we have a set A of one, two, three, and then we took the union, let's say, C of A union empty. Since the union is the combination of sets, if we take set one, two, three, and then combine that with the empty set here, we would still get one, two, three, or also known as A. It doesn't matter how many sets that we union we could have 60 billion different sets, but if we take the union of those 60 billion sets and then the empty set, we would still get those 60 billion sets. Once you understand a little bit about how set theory works in mathematics, then the never keyword is pretty trivially simple. The never keyword is essentially the empty set in TypeScript or what I like to call it, the never keyword or type kind of represents nothingness. And what that basically means is that nothing can be assigned to never. If we created a variable called funky var and assigned it to type never, we couldn't assign anything to never. 
we can't assign a number or a string or an object or even undefined or null. Those, those values aren't even assignable to never. Now you might be thinking to yourself, golly, why would I use the never keyword if I can't assign anything to it? It seems pretty useless. Well, remember what we discussed about regarding unions and set theory, how the empty set essentially is deleted from the union. That is also equally true when it comes to TypeScript type unions. So for example, if we have a type called color and we assign that to a string, but we also assign have a union of never, when we hover over the color type, we see that it's only a string. And that's because we took this here and then the union of never, and since the empty set gets deleted from the union, we get only string back. And this applies to n amount of unions. We could take the union of a number here, and, then we, and an object, and yada yada, and then union that to never, but then when we hover over it, we still get string, number, or object. So now we know what really the never keyword is all about. Now we can discuss some of the use cases that the never keyword has and kind of, dis kind of dissect why the never keyword is used in those scenarios. The first one I want to talk about is a popular example with, with the never keyword. And that has to do with returning never from a function. So imagine that we have this following problem that we want to solve. We have a function called sum that takes in two numbers, a and b. And this function is very easy. We're just going to say a plus b. Now, let's imagine that we have another function called number or random. And all this function is going to do is either return a number or undefined. I'm sorry, this needs to be undefined. Number or undefined. It is going to be random though. Kind of. We're going to we're going to just return a number for now, but in the actual implementation, this would be random, whether it would return a number or undefined. And so let's imagine that we have a variable called a that is going to be number or undefined, and then const b equals number or undefined. And then when we hover over a, and B, we can see that we have a union of number or undefined. Now, a common practice in other programming languages is if a variable is undefined or null, we want to a throw an error because we don't usually want undefined or null in our system. So. One way to do that is through what's called a throw expression, which is essentially we use this null coalescing operator to essentially say if the left hand operand is null or undefined, evaluate the right hand operand. So here we can just say like three, and then if we hover over it, we can see that it turns into a number. But some programming languages allows us to throw errors instead not a number, for example. But we can see that TypeScript is throwing an error because JavaScript natively doesn't have support for throw expressions. So one way to get around that is we can have a function called throw error that just throws the error. And this we're going to turn void error. And this needs to be function like that not a number. Now we can use our throw error function like this. Then we can do that for here. And now theoretically we can call sum. So we can say sum a and b. 
Unfortunately, when we hover over A, we get an error saying argument of type number or void is not assignable to a parameter of number. And that is because of a unique little quirk within JavaScript that is carried over into TypeScript. And that can be very simply stated as void, void functions return void and TypeScript because it's a pretty powerful superset of JavaScript. Has a, has a separate type for void because in JavaScript, void is equivalent to undefined where we can say void var type void is equal to undefined. So it would be logical to think that we can take the union of void here or void or another way to say it is that void could be inside of a union. Now that would cause some problems though, because sum is expecting a number, not number union void. So we have an interesting problem. We need some way to essentially delete this void from this a variable. And the only way to delete a type from a union is through the never keyword. And so what we can do, and since all functions has to return something, even if it returns void, TypeScript allows us to return never so long as this function either is in an infinite loop or an error is thrown. But once we have done that and we hover over A, we can see that it's just a number because this part of this null coalescing evaluates to never and never gets removed from the union. The second use of the never keyword has to do with conditional types and deleting properties from map types. So we know in TypeScript, we can use map types, which is a special construct where we can loop over an object and manipulate its properties. So a basic map type we could create is a, like a nothing map type, where all it does is just takes the key and let's just, you know, extend this. Let's just make this a generic type key in a key of T and then we just say t of key. This is the most rudimentary map type where we just essentially do a copy and paste of an object. But let's imagine that we want to delete a property from t. Let's imagine that we have a user t object, const user, that has an ID of, let's say, three, a first name, of Billy and a last name of Bob. And we want to create a type that is essentially the copy of user, but we want to remove this ID portion. Now to do that, all we need to do is we're going to create a type called user without ID. And here we're going to create a map type like we did in the previous example, where we say key in key of type of user. And then for the return type, we just want to return type of user key like that. But we still get ID first name and last name. We need to somehow delete a property from this function, from this map type. And to delete properties, all we need to do is essentially evaluate this portion right here to never. And TypeScript will delete that because never means nothing. And so it just disappears. And to do that, we can use the as keyword here. And then we can specify a conditional type. And for this example, we're just going to say key extends ID. And if that's true, then we're just, we're going to return never else we're just going to return key. And now if we hover over user without ID, we can see that the first name and last name are still intact, but the ID is gone. And since this part 
is essentially a conditional type, we can use the never keyword in conditional types here. So we can say never condition here, or t, and we can say t extends string. If that's true, then return a number, else never. And all the same rules apply here. If we have a type called union type, and we, let's say, have an object, and then a union of never condition, and let's specify that this is going to be a boolean. If we hover over this union type, it's an object because this gets removed from the union because this evaluates to never. So this can be useful, this never type, when we want to delete properties from map types or use them in more complicated scenarios like map types here. Now the last example I want to talk about regarding the never keyword has to do with type narrowing when it comes to a type that is narrowed down to something that is not of that type. And a great way to explain that is with this simple example. Let's imagine that we have a type called color that is going to be a union of strings, notably colors. We're going to union green, blue, or black. You know, actually, let's just make this red, green, or blue, just for this example. And let's have a function called name2hex, where we essentially take in a color variable of type color. And we're going to return the hexadecimal RGB equivalent of red, green, and blue. And this can be easily done using a switch statement here. So let's say switch color. And then if we create, if we open up a new case and we select a option, red, and then we hover over, actually, if we create a new variable, C equals color, and we hover over it, we can see that C is red. Because what essentially TypeScript has done is when we're in a switch statement and we hit this case red, then TypeScript knows that this color can't be anything besides red. So it will narrow down the type, meaning th this union essentially gets narrowed down to this here. That is what TypeScript does at least. And so here, we're gonna just return FF0000, just for uh, simplicity. And then we can do this for blue, 00FF00, and for green. Uh, this, my apologies, actually needs to be in a different order. I made a mistake there. Okay, and this is 0000, 0, 0, 0 FF, like this. And this is what the type narrowing system does. If we get into this green case, then the red disappears and the blue disappears. And if we're in the blue case, then red and green disappears. From the union. Now, in JavaScript, we have the ability to create a default case. And you might be wondering yourself, wondering to yourself, well, if all three of these strings of this union have been covered by these cases, what would color be in this default case? Well, that's a very good question. If we create a new variable called mystery bar and we set that to color and we hover over it we can see that mystery var is of type never and that actually makes a whole heck of a lot of sense because because remember what typescript does when we get to this default case it says okay it's not red it's not green it's not blue so essentially it just deletes all this and then it needs to fill in the void. Well, the only logical ex explanation is that, well, we ended up in a weird spot where 
color is not actually a color. It's something else. So it just returns never like that because obviously it's not a color. So we ended up in a configuration that if we use TypeScript in it, in its most pure sense, you could say, without introducing any any's, then we ended up in an impossible situation. And the reason why this impossible situation could happen has to do with the any keyword. So let's imagine that we had a variable here called color and we set this to any and then we said this was purple. Now if we were to call names a hex and pass in this color, TypeScript is completely happy. That is because the any keyword essentially disables type checking. TypeScript is going to assume that you know what you're doing. So that is why we need this default case statement sometimes. And this is what's known as an exhaustive check here, where we create a variable called exhaustive check here that's of type never. And then we can just do something like console.log exhaustive check or something or some error. And that will handle the, the unusual case where this where an any variable is passed to a function. Normally, this wouldn't be necessarily a, a problem because, because if we've been using TypeScript throughout the whole project without including any JavaScript and we correctly typed everything, then this should not happen. But we need, it, we need this just to be safe. Well, we just went over a quick explanation of why the never keyword works the way it is. All in all, the never keyword can be summarized as nothingness, or also known as the empty set. Whenever you see the never type being used in a union type or in an intersection, you can just imagine that it just has been deleted from that union or intersection. And with that knowledge, we can start explaining why some of the use cases work the way they do. And those use cases are, one, we can return the never type in a function if we can throw an error or are in an infinite loop. And this can be used when we want to use throw expressions or we want to call a function in an operator that can be evaluated to a variable like the null coalescing operator or the ternary operator, stuff like that. The second use case of the never keyword that we explored has to do with conditional types and map types, where we can delete properties from a map type by essentially reevaluating the, the property key to never, which will effectively delete it from the map type. We also discussed very briefly about how the never keyword can be used in conditional types. And lastly, we talked about the never keyword when it comes to type narrowing using switch statements and if conditions, where if we have a union of specific types, for example, like string literals, and the type narrowing system narrows the type down to a value that isn't within that union, how the never keyword can be used to capture that specific scenario in the switch statement or if condition. And with that, those are the three main use cases of the never keyword. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. And with that, I will see you next time.